Hello everyone, happy Sunday! I'm Steve, Mark's at work, and this is Smokey Steve and Mark. Either welcome or welcome back. This is the last cup of coffee of the weekend, and I haven't slipped into a pair of undies yet, so... And we're going basic. This is the last of that Ensure tasting stuff and some coffee. And I'm using erythritol, so... One of these days I'm just gonna shock you and be like, yeah, I'm using ranch dressing today. So, forgive my... We're still getting used to the new lighting. It's a little different, so... Please forgive if I'm squinting a little bit. Today we are going to revisit the Ascot Basket. This is the Ascot Basket. Now for anyone new or who doesn't know, um, the Ascot Basket is filled with different topics, some of which Mark and I preloaded, and some that were submitted by um, viewers. And I pull a topic and speak extemporaneously on said topic. So that's kind of the gist of the basket. Um, so I will pull one at random. Don't know what the top... I know what topics are in the basket, but I don't know which one I'm going to be talking about today. If you have any suggestions, please feel free to leave a comment, and I will be happy to add those to it. So, without further ado, let's see what we'll be chatting about today. I pulled all the controversial ones. We already talked in the live stream about getting politics and religion out, so... Today's topic is food. That sounds nice and neutral. I mean, I suppose it could be. Um, food. I love food. Never trust a person who has an eating, who's had an eating disorder that says they don't like food. It's lies. It's all lies. Um, I've been an overweight person. I've been an obese person. I've been an underweight person, you know, as an adult. Um, I've had diagnosed eating disorders. Um, I've had outpatient treatment for that. Um, I've gone on several weight loss journeys. I've lost 100 pounds almost probably about three times throughout my life where I've gained it, lost it, gained it, lost it. Right now this is the third time I've lost it. Um, this started as a weight loss channel. So initially I was about 230 pounds when the channel started and now I'm um, between 180 and 190, closer to 190. I gained a few pounds back. I had hit 180 maybe a year ago or so. So food has been a, has always been a big part of my life, for good or for ill. Um, I have a history of addiction, also. A couple other videos on that. But one of the first substances I think I probably ever abused was food. You know, I couldn't reach the liquor cabinet when I was eight or nine, but I could reach the fridge. And if I climbed, even though I was a heavy kid, I tried, I could climb into the pantry and steal, you know, whatever was up top. Um, usually... I didn't eat breakfast as a kid because school made me nervous, like absolutely terrified. I remember when I was in second grade, I'd get up and like throw up every day before school from the nerves. I hated my teacher, absolutely hated her. And I'd throw up, go to school, breakfast. I was never a breakfast person, not even as a child because I was sick to death in the morning. I had my lunch, whatever my dad packed, dad packed the lunches, and um, get home and eat, drink almost a two liter of soda, um, whatever d sweets we had in the house, maybe leftovers from the night before his dinner, and then we'd have dinner a couple hours later when my dad got home, and then I'd clear the table, but I would still eat whatever leftovers because we'd serve everything family style on the table. I have a brother and a sister, and we would all sit around the table and eat every night when I was growing up. And I'd put everything away and pretty much finish most of it before it got put to the fridge. So I started gaining weight really, really quickly. Um, and I don't think at that age I correlated. I don't think I thought I was eating a lot. Um, I was I was so young, I didn't really put two and two together. And then as I got older, it started making more sense. I remember even skipping days of school when I thought that there would be, like, good food available in the house. And I would stay home alone because both my parents worked and eat on those days. Um, yeah, I've always had a strange relationship with food on, on my own. Um... Now, having said that, when I started to develop some, like, eating disorder behaviors and I was, like, restricting and not eating, I still thought about food all the time. I'd watch cooking shows. Um, I'd read recipes. I would cook a lot. I kind of started taking over some of the cooking duties when I became a teenager. I lived with my parents. So I still had an interest in it all the time. I was curious about it. I feigned vegetarianism as an excuse to eat less. Um... But I was always into, like, vegetarian recipes and trying this and trying that. And 
Uh, so I, I was always into it. You know, I always was. And I still like to cook. I've cooked all through all these periods when I had access to a kitchen. You know, in college sometimes I didn't. I was in a dorm. And certainly when I was in some different facilities, um, you know, you don't cook. Your meals are prepared for you. Uh, even then, though, food was always like something to look forward to. It was like part of a, a schedule in some of those places. One of the only places, one of the only times I ever ate breakfast, lunch, dinner is when I'm in some sort of facility, whether it was a mental health facility, which I had spent all told over, it was five times and it was a week each time. So it was, you know, a while. Um, drug and alcohol treatment, those were extended stays, somewhere up to three months. Um, and then of course I was incarcerated, but they give you breakfast, lunch, dinner. The only times in my life where I really ate breakfast, lunch, dinner was in those facilities because it kind of marked the time. It was something to look forward to. It was a relief from all the other, like, seemingly high-stress stuff. I definitely eat on my anxiety. I definitely do that. I use food as a reward. Um, I use food as a source of comfort, as a source of fuel. You know, I respect that food is meant to be fuel, so that's not entirely lost on me. But I also use food for a thousand... It, it means so much more than it should. Like, food should be fuel. And if it tastes good, great. I mean, life is short. But... It means so many other things to me. It, it's nurturing. It's like a hug from the inside out. You know, it's, it's got all this other stuff that goes with it. My weird behaviors around food um, were probably as a result of needing and then not needing. I'm talking about the, like, bulimic sort of kind of things like that. Um, you know, I need to feel happy. I need to feel... Uh, comforted, I need to feel this, I need to feel that, and then suddenly right after it is, God, you're needy, God, you're greedy, God, you're pathetic, and then give back all the uh, uh, love and, and whatever that I believed I was giving myself. That was just, I just tried to emotionally explain bitching and purging. Um, I don't know if I did that very well. But, you know, there's there's people that do love food, I think, that certainly don't have the twisted relationship that I've, I've shared with it over the years, which is not bad now. I'm in a decent spot with food now. But I'm 37, you know, and this all started when I was seven. So this is, you know, it's been about 30 years to try to come to grips with that. Um, you know, Mark loves food, but Mark's a chef. You know, it manifested differently with him. For him, he feeds people. You know, it's one of the you think like, oh, you know, he's he's a cook, he's a chef. And it's, it's you know, I think it's prestigious, you know. And he does one of the most basic human things that you can do for other people. You provide them with food, you know. To me, that is just so, so there's something so sacred about that act. Even though it's a paid job, and I know, but there's something simple about your vocation being to feed people. Um, and, and he's a very good cook. Um, and we do have good food come through the house every so often. Christmas, there's cookies scattered all over the house. And, you know, like for a lot of people, not everybody, but many people, food gets tied into holidays and family and love. And, you know, you don't want to say no to your great aunt who's trying to feed you some of her food, because if you turn down her food, it means you don't love and respect her. And so it's symbolic of other stuff. Like, again, with the food meaning more than it's just fuel. It has all these other emotional attachments that come with it. So, all right, I don't feel like it's just me now. I feel better. I'm probably projecting so I don't feel so guilty. Well, that's neither here nor there either. But at any rate, going forward, you know, Mark's appreciation for food goes into a different direction. It's part of his trade. It's part of what he shares with the world. Mine manifests a little bit differently on another side of things. Granted, I like to cook, and I kind of like it a little bit differently now. I don't treat cooking as a, um, you know, chemistry experiment of how little of this ingredient can I use and how little of this can I use for it to be, you know, both healthy and not going to cause this and cause that. Um, it's one of the reasons I think when I was playing with weight loss and stuff like that, that certain um, diets that had a lot of numeric rigidity I, I couldn't really get my hands around because weight calories numbers were something that were buried into me for a long time. I did do calorie restriction, but I tended to round a little bit. And that was kind of for my own sanity. I tend to like close the vice tighter and tighter. The, the more I count, the more I count. You know, all of a sudden I go from rounding 
20 calories, 50 calories this direction to now it's within 10 calories. Then I'm weighing my food to the 10th of the gram and then it goes a little deeper. Some folks take that discipline and run with it and it fuels their journey and that's then that's what works for them. But because of my previous preoccupations with food and the implications and the emotional implications and my sense of success and failure that stuck around it, basing my uh, worth around a tenth of a gram was was not something I could engage in. It wouldn't take me to a good place. So it's not how I could go about things. Um, but plenty of other people do and they have great success with it. So this is making me hungry. <laughs> It's making me very hungry to talk about food. Um, you know, at the moment, food still has all those emotional things for me. Food is still emotional. I still um, want to eat when when I'm when I'm want to go to sleep. It makes me feel sleepy when I want to comfort myself. When I'm bored, you know, I still eat for all the same reasons I used to. I eat different foods. Um, Sometimes I'm able to put it off. I have alternative coping skills that I didn't used to have. A lot of those came as a chunk of my mental health recovery because um, I have a couple other mental health diagnoses aside from, um, un, you know, undifferentiated eating disorder now because I don't meet the criteria for like bulimia or anything else at this point. Um, so I'm in, a, I'm in a bit of a better spot, better spot. You know, it's still emotional. It still means more to me than I wish it did, but... You know, I'm not exploding, I'm not imploding, um, I'm eating enough to keep, you know, what's left of my hair and my fingernails and my skin intact, and I'm not growing extra fur, and I always thought it was stupid that the criteria for anorexia meant that you had to lose your period. Like, how was I ever going to meet the criteria and get treatment at the time? That's neither here nor there either. Too debatable. So at any rate, I hope if you're having a snack, I should have did a mukbang during this, shouldn't I? Well, I didn't know I was talking about food. I guess that wouldn't have made sense. But if you were having a snack during this, I hope you enjoyed it. And thank you all for watching. Happy Sunday. We're coming up on the rest of the week. Tomorrow is Mondays with Mark. I don't know if I will or won't be here for that. I work late Tuesday, so I definitely won't be here uh, for Tuesday's video. But at any rate, y'all are going to come back for Mark, I'm sure. So thank you for watching. Give us a thumbs up, hit the like button, please subscribe, hit the bell so you get the alert so you know what's coming up. You can follow Mark and I on Facebook at Smokey Steve Space and Mark, or on Instagram at Smokey Steve and Mark. Our email and our contact information is listed below for any correspondence or anything like that. Thank you all for watching, and we will catch up with you tomorrow. Bye!